Hello and welcome to the Ramsar podcast. Uh, I am back again with uh, with Chris Holt. Chris, uh, good morning, mate. It's Saturday morning. Uh, how are we doing, fella? You're all right. Good morning, Simon. Getting me up so early. How dare you? I'm sorry, but I, f- I felt that after after what day <laughs> yesterday was um, in regards to Derby County, I had to get you up early and we had to discuss it, mate. Um, <laughs> it's been a bit of a bit of a roller coaster, really, hasn't it? Never a dull moment with our beloved football club. This is, true. this is true indeed. So we'll start off then Friday morning. Well, actually, we'll start with we'll we'll wind it back to Thursday night where there was reports from Alan Nixon from the Sun, Rob Dorset from Sky, and of course John Persson from the Telegraph that all said that uh, David Clouds is uh, looking to buy the club, um, and they weren't sure if it was with another bidder or on it on his own, and he was set to be announced as preferred bidder. And we, we all got a bit excited on Thursday. And then Friday, we, uh, we had uh, this statement, which I will read out, which uh, came from the uh, BBC, which says, um, local property developer David Clowes says he will make a bid to buy Derby County on, <coughs> on Friday, so yesterday, after purchasing the League One Club's Pride Park Stadium. His company, Clowes Development UK Limited, have also given a loan to the club to allow them to start next season. Clowes' attempt to take Derby administration comes after Chris Kirchner withdrew his bid on 13th of June. With the deadline looming at the start of next season get closer, we need to do something, he said. Clowes said a formal bid for the club will be submitted later on Friday, a week after Pride Park was brought from Derby's former owner, Mel Morris. The purchase of the ground, which has previously caused major problems with attempts to sell the club, has been kept confidential until the loan agreement has been completed. The English Football League welcomed the acquisition and that Clowes' development would be submitting a bid to the club. Over the last two weeks, the AFL has met daily with joint administrators one two as they continue their efforts to sell the club and is now working closely with all parties to ensure they recognise the importance of compliance with the league's regulation and insolvency policy with the objective of securing the club's ex from administration. So the statement. Whew. The league has already commenced the process in respect of its owners and directors test, as well as an assessment of the ultimate source and sufficiency of funding support that proposed a business, for, uh, business plan for the club. Goes on to say about Quantuma, um, said the loan would allow to it would allow the Rams to continue to trade and added that they look forward to continuing private uh, positive discussions about the takeover. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to read the rest of it because it's quite long winded. But David Clausen, um, obviously you sort of know him. <laughs> um, I think. I think you know it's it's, it's uh, it, it was it was a great way to to sort of wake up to Friday morning to, and to sort of think, Angaba, are we is this actually going to happen now? Are we actually going to be finally be taken over? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think we spoke briefly a few weeks ago about his name being banded around, and you mm. asked me about um, why I thought of it. Mm. Um, very successful businessman, his family have a uh, legacy of uh, a good business ethos in the development world uh, with his dad, Charlie, obviously leading the way all those years ago. Um, Very astute guy. Um, Like I said, I I know him through uh, my other day job as well. Um, Really nice guy, actually. Um, Very approachable, very down to earth, massive Derby fan, as we all know. Um, Yeah, he's a home and away kind of guy. I think that he saw that something had to be done. He's in a very fortunate position that he could do something. And, uh, you know, with his apparent wealth being in excess of £300 million, um, I think whatever he's decided, ultimately he's in real estate. So he's bought bought a real real estate commodity. Mm -hmm. So it's an investment regarding the stadium. It's uh, certainly the most iconic building in our wonderful city yeah and uh so i don't think he's ever going to lose out on that uh it'd be interesting now what his uh next step is and how much loan he's actually given to the club to to move forward simon yeah it would be i mean obviously again it, it said that he was you know the, the the article said that he was um looking at putting a bid in um no, I had no confirmation of that yet if he has or not um and yeah so do you do you think he'll put a bid in? Is he? You say he's a he's an astute businessman. Is, is he the sort of person that would take on a football club? And I think as well, a lot of fans have sort of gone, 
I hope he's not another Mel Morris, you know, a fan. But let's let's be real here. You've just said it there. Dave, you know, Klaus, he's, he obviously goes to home and away matches. Mel Morris only went to his Derby games when he became the owner. He didn't go before. You know, <laughs> so I think, you know, he is a, you know, Klaus is a proper fan. Mel Morris wasn't. Um, so I don't think we're getting another Mel Morris. Um, but yeah, can you see, you know, you said, obviously, we, we, his estimated worth is 300 million. I guess 300 million is a, a lot of money to run a football club. But, you know what I mean? It, it's, it doesn't matter how much money you've got. You know, you look at, you look at like Norwich, for instance. I think their owners were 70 million, something like that. Maybe a little bit more. It's, it's how you run the club. Do you reckon he could run the club well or do you think he'd need help? Really, really good question. Um, in my opinion, he is astute enough to realise that um, he will want to lead with his head and not his heart, mm. which is a very important thing. This is a gentleman who buys uh, land uh, on a regular basis, knows what a good GDV return is on a development against a bad GDV return, which is obviously gross development value. Yeah. Regarding a football club, I would imagine the first thing he'll do is put a structure in place. Um, he takes over the club uh, in, a, in a sole capacity, which is obviously another question we can discuss later. Um, I think the first thing he has to do is put a structure of a board in place uh, and then obviously a, a DOF. Um, I would imagine that he'd probably bring someone rather close to him to be a CEO. Um, the interesting thing about David against, say, Mel Morris is that Mel, if you look through his history of, of business, he sort of put his toe in many uh, types of business and been successful in some and failed in others. Yeah. You go back to um, udate.com back in the early noughties, the first sort of famous dating site on, online. Uh, and he sold that and then went into uh, various, into, I think it was, uh, was it cyber security? And, yeah. and then obviously Canada Crush, he sort of, dabbled in all kinds of things, you know, pub purchases, et cetera, et cetera, whereas David has always been involved with his family heritage, which is a very, very successful development company. So that would that would stand me as a big positive. Yeah. Um, he he knows he knows how to get the best out of retail uh, within um, the roles of development. Yeah. So he'll know to get the best out of prior park stadium and develop it accordingly to give it the biggest asset i think regarding the football um i would be of the understanding that he would probably bring in locals who have been involved with the game yeah and we can all add names to that list from gads beers the web web yeah, Amon, except, maybe them sort of don folks. yeah don's a good guy and, and yeah. you know you could even bring back the likes of mike horton etc just to get the uh, stability there on a short-term basis. Um, I think that the next 48 hours will be crucial regarding his direction. Mm -hmm. um, I think let's, let, let, let's, let's be straight about it. It had to come now. A decision had to be made. And I don't think, to be honest, if we're looking at a local support, you couldn't ask for a better option than David. I think it's a very, very good time for him to come in. Mm. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think you'll do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. it sounds positive. It, it does sound very positive indeed, which is something I don't think we'd, we'd hear. You know, we'd, we'd talk about positivity. Um, you know, I think you, you also mentioned a name to me, uh, I think it was Thursday night. Steve Howard, do you reckon he might be involved in the, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, sort of you know, somewhere in the back room somewhere, perhaps. Big fan, be, you know. Big fan. Um, very, very successful businessman in his own right. Mm -hmm. um, again, in development. Um, he's made a, a, a good earning and a good living since football and invested very wisely. Um, why not? You know, yeah. why not? He, he, I like Stevie Howard. It, it's a long shot. Who knows? I yeah, think yeah. It's, it's one of many names that have been mentioned. Um, yeah. I just think that David will, will go to people who, have got that knowledge and understanding because this is this is a a new industry to him. Yeah, yeah. he's a fan, massive fan of football, very knowledgeable of football, mm. but also he, he's he's never run a football club before. And you know, and I know, you change 
you change jobs, it's always a gamble, or you change a career, it's always a gamble. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's a gamble for David because I know straight away the first thing he'll do, he'll be on the phone. He's probably got a board in his head already in place. Yeah. yeah. You know, probably got a DOE in place. Yeah. And then obviously, well, <laughs> then there's the management structure. Yeah. We'll get onto that in a minute. Um, <laughs> so here's my theory. <clears throat> Now, obviously, we've been in administration since, well, what feels like a year, but it's not. It's only nine months since September. And we've struggled to sell. We've, struggled. we've had plenty of interest by the sounds of things, but it's been obstacles in the way. Um, and it's been very difficult. A lot of stick has gone Quantuma's way. Now, there's been suggestions that Mel Morris has, you know, there's been rumours, shall we say, that Mel Morris has also had a bit of a say, especially when it comes to the stadium. So here's a theory. Now, we all know, and it was mentioned again earlier this week, Mike Ashley has got £50 million in the bank ready to buy this club and the stadium. But, as Mike Ashley's people have said, Quantuma won't talk to him, Mel won't talk to him, don't want to deal with him. My theory is, Klaus knows this, or oh, sorry, Klaus, he's in. David Klaus knows this, big fan, knows probably Ashley would do a decent job. Um, could Klaus be buying the club get out of administration to then put a quick sell on to Mike Ashley. You know, we've seen clubs, this this happened before, where clubs have been bought out of administration and either sold on or put back into administration. Hey, Wigan. Uh, yeah, was it Wigan? Uh, yeah. yeah, Wigan, yeah. That's a theory. And obviously with you saying that he's never, you know, he's not really been in football before. It's a big gamble for him. Yeah, he's a big fan. Do you think that could be a, a logical theory? It's a sensible theory. Um, it would make perfect sense to take um, someone out the, the, the loop as such mm. and be able to do a transaction smoothly. Um, it'd be interesting to see if there's a clause yeah. that he puts in that he doesn't allow that to happen. I would find that incredibly doubtful that he's allowed to put a clause in, yeah, yeah, to be yeah. honest, because ultimately you're dealing now with the football club through Quantuma. Mm. Um I think bringing in someone like Mike Ashley would be an incredible uh, partnership, a good partnership. Uh, whether they could work hand in hand for a short term, who knows? Yeah. Um, David might have ambition himself. Mm. Um, like we said, we're in League One and we're not in the Premier League. So, three hundred million pounds. If he if he's put a a side pot to one side of say fifty million pounds, that's more than enough to compete. In yeah, league yeah. one and probably in the championship you know you look at Luton's budget uh who got to the playoffs this year I bet their budget is nowhere near mm. 50 million pounds so it's a really good theory Simon and um who knows who knows um, you you've obviously been thinking about this uh, since Thursday <laughs> and it would be and there's other people obviously interested as well so I know that John Percy did he mention the similar thing on Friday he obviously didn't speak to you uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I miss. I must have missed that. I don't know. If, I can't remember if he said he's doing it on himself. I know. So, I'm sure on Thursday, Rob Dawson said he could be linking up with someone. Yeah, another John party. Said the same. Yeah. And then, yeah. So you, you'd guess maybe Mike Ashley, maybe Andy Appleby. Uh, you know, we just obviously until it comes out. I, I think they give a deadline for Wednesday, didn't they? I think I've, I've seen that banded about. Amazing. Yes. You know, not a 94 day uh, deadline of extensions for. Mm. A previous uh, bidder, preferred bidder, but they've, they've given him all of what five days. But yeah. David is, you know, like I said, he's a, an incredibly successful businessman, very highly thought of mm. in uh, the industry of development. He does a lot with house associations as well. Yeah. So um, he's got a lot of credibility in what he does. And mm. I think that, uh, and if he does run it on his own with a with a good ball behind him, it, it could be a fantastic two or three years for the football club. And then obviously bring in someone at a latter stage once we're in the upper echelons of the championship. <laughs> I don't get oh, too I'm far always confident. I'm He's always well, confident. look at that. He's ahead of himself already. <laughs> it's interesting because on our last podcast, we were talking about Kirchner and, and the board he might bring in. And we mentioned obviously Stratford and Cook and whatnot. And I think obviously we, we say it again, obviously it didn't happen with Kirchner. It, it turns out he was... A, a tie kicker, if you want to call him that, you know. And I think I think you had your doubts, didn't you, from the start? Um, but I think it's difficult, you know. Sometimes you let your 
I know I did. I was all behind him. You know, my emotions took over, and it was like, yes, yeah, someone's going to save the club. We're in here, and it looked good. And we thought, finally, we can we can finally talk about football. But it didn't happen. It, it wasn't meant to be. But yeah, I think that's that's ultimately is the most important thing is whoever does have the club, whether it be whether it because it obviously might not be Clouds yet, but whether it be Appleby, Clouds, Ashley, whoever it is, they'll need a good a good board and and just to just to start running and, and rebuilding things. And that starts from the manager because just as if we thought Friday was, you know, it was going great. You know, we, we started to breathe a sigh of relief. Um all of a sudden we are hit with um <laughs> with we are hit with this news from Derby County. Wayne Rooney has today informed Derby County Football Club that he wishes to be relieved of his duties as first team manager with immediate effect. Rooney said, over the course of the summer, I have been closely following developments regarding the ownership of Derby County. Today, I met with administrators to inform them of my decision and it was time for me to leave in the, the club. In fairness to them, they tried tremendously hard to change my decision, but my mind was made up. My time at the club has been a roller coaster of emotions, both highs and lows, but I have to say that I enjoyed the challenge. Personally, I feel the club now needs to be led by someone with fresh energy and not affected by the events that have happened over the last 18 months. I remember my time at Derby with great pride and affection and would like to thank all of my staff, players, and of course the fans for the incredible support. I'll never forget you and hope to see you all again in the near future and in happier times. Finally, I'm aware the club still have interested parties who wish to take over the run of the club. To them, I say this, Derby County is a great club with a great history and great fans. I wish you all the best and much success for the future. Uh, Quantum then followed up with a statement said the joint administrators are very disappointed that Wayne has taken the difficult decision to leave the club and we have spent some time today trying to persuade him but to stay but understand his reasons for him to go we are extremely grateful to him for his excellent work in the face of challenging and unfair circumstances in 2021-22 season and, the, and admire the manner in which he has led the team the club and the local community through various off-field issues the joint administrators recognise that staff and supporters will be frustrated and equally disappointed by this news but be wishing his wife clean and their four boys every success in their future and we are sure they'll all, they'll always be welcomed back of course he's got the key to the sea <clears throat> we'll go on to that all parties recognize the need to conclude the sale of the business and assets of the club as a matter of urgency and the joint administration wish to reconfirm that wayne's departure will not affect those ongoing positive discussions so wayne rooney has left derby county Wayne Rooney is no longer manager of Derby County. Wayne Rooney expressed that he would stick with this club if a takeover was done. What, two, three weeks now is it since Coach Curse's bid fell for? And Wayne Rooney has left the club, despite obviously the good news that we heard this morning. Now, I tweeted out yesterday and got a bit of abuse. Well, not abuse, but a bit of, and it's fine. It's your opinion. You say what you like. But I basically tweeted out uh, something along the lines of, um, his mate Chris Kirchner has now withdrawn his bid for the club and now he's leaving loyalty in quotation marks because he spoke about loyalty a lot of people give me a bit of backlash on that which is fair enough that's your opinion but to me the man said he was here for the club he would stay with this club and he's gone to me that stinks there's definitely something not right with that and you know what um, I'm, I wasn't shocked when I heard the news because I thought it was inevitably going to happen once Chris Kirchner's bid failed. Chris, what are your thoughts? Um, well, yesterday afternoon, I'm uh, yeah spending some time with my beloved children, and the last thing I was expecting uh, was the news, or wasn't I expecting it? Um, I found it interesting uh, last night listening to the, the good old radio derby sports scene well moaning as we call it nowadays um <laughs> it's old school with colin gibson wasn't it last night it was with uh, cg yes uh it was it was, it was nice to hear uh, his voice he's, he's a very good journalist um i was quite surprised the the sort of split in opinion mm. of his departure um and i think there's a lot of uh there's a lot of emotion in running through the fans at the moment but there's a lot of very level heads because i think it was bad timing yeah we, straight definitely. away i don't get the timing at all no um i've seen people joke about the fact as soon as they announced the friendly against leicester city 
Colleen turned around and said, well, we're not having that, are we? Um, <laughs> allegedly, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but I think that, yeah, the timing was bad. Um, Wayne, there's, there's so many scenarios it could be, and you know, we've, we've got to be all careful of, uh, yeah. of what we say. There's, there's numerous possibilities that the fact that the Kirchner deal collapsed and Wayne obviously pinned his rosette potentially to Chris and, and his and his uh, takeover. Um, he clearly was also very mentally exhausted towards yeah. the uh, campaign. Like, you know, I always remember, I always say to people, if you look at Philip Koku when it was at his very worst, you know, the fresh-faced Dutchman came in, went out to Florida, if I remember rightly, and, yes. and looked, yeah, yeah. And looked uh, very healthy and positive. And by the time he left Derby County, he looked withered, grey, and, and and as if he hadn't slept for, for six weeks. I think Wayne, you could start to see the wear and tear on him. Um, I wish him all the best, to be honest. Yeah. Um, he, he, I think one thing that he'll always be remembered for is bringing unity yeah, yeah. back to the city. He's brought the fans back together. Mm. He's brought the club back to the fans. And I think um, if he can be remembered for that in a positive way, um, I think that very few managers that we've had in the last sort of post-war era, you know, you look at obviously Brian Clough and, and then you can look at um, Dave Mackay and then Arthur Cox and Jim Smith. And, um, they are legends of the football club. I think Wayne obviously has got a bright future ahead in coaching and management. Um, but I think that to bring that unity back to the football club and pride, because yeah. let's be honest, we had a stinker. We were on our knees, season. let's be honest, weren't we? Yeah, we were. And whatever happened, you know, he brought he brought that back. So I wish him all the best. Am I surprised? Uh, no. no. Now I think about it the following day. No, I'm not surprised. I think... Um, Who's to say that he made that choice? You know, it could be for a financial stability for the club. Yeah. You know, you look, you look at various um, opportunities that are there with sponsorship and uh, structure of salary, and you might find that he's realised that perhaps his salary would be more beneficial to be kept within the club. Yeah. You know, his salary, whatever it may be, there's all numbers banded around, could bring in six or seven quality players and keep them uh, paid for week in, week out for the whole season. Mm. And he, if he's looked at that and gracefully walked away, then then fantastic. I'm not going to say nothing but positive about Wayne. I know uh, I did a couple of tweets yesterday about it, but a couple of people gave me some stick and said, oh, you're just a, you're just a, a Wayne friend. Not at all. You know, when I've met the guy, he's always been really, really approachable. Um, always had a positive thing to say about the club. And... Ultimately, he was the fan's voice, wasn't he, through the through the trauma? So yeah, I don't know your thoughts, Simon. I think when I tweeted out, it was it was emotion. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, for sake. Um, you know, I've calmed down a bit now, and I I I, I am, you know, Wayne. Wayne, you, you've basically said everything I could say about Wayne. You know how we brought the fan, the club, everything back together. You know, a lot of people said he could have left early. You know, he, he could have left early, but he didn't. To me, though, obviously, with the way things were with, you saw, you know, Kirchner with his agent Stratford and Gary Cork, and and obviously, I think Wayne said himself that, you know, Kirchner had approached him. It just all seemed a bit too, uh, what's the word, coincidental, you know what I mean, for for the Kirchner to go, to go south and then Rooney to sort of quit. It just felt a bit like, well... Mm, he may have gone earlier, but obviously he was hoping for for something more, um, which guaranteed him. Uh, I think it guaranteed him more management time in a club. Um, but I think now what what he'll do now for me, I think it's go away, go get your coaching budgets. He's got experience of managing now, that's fine. But I think he needs the educational side of it as well. There is, you know, you you, you can learn so much experience wise but I think sometimes you just need that educational push to make you a top coach and I think you know he will be I think someone says always oh, got like a 28% win rate that's fine I, you know it's not great but let's let's look at the situation he's been in for the past 18 months 
you know, with all COVID and whatnot, first season management, no one really knowing what was going on, a bit of a broken squad, and then obviously not being able to sign anybody at the start of last season. Um, building a squad from next to nothing for EB's loans, and you know, he he was I think was it four points, was it that we were that we we, we were running was it four points off safety we finished up? Yeah, four we finished uh something like that. Something like that, set four or seven. Seven, four like or seven. Could have been yeah, seven. Yeah. Exactly, but that's with a minus twenty one point deduction. So yeah, I'll, I'll praise him and, and I respect him as a player. He'll always be one of my favourite players, you know, as a footballer. And I'll, I'll still respect him now, even though he's left. But yeah, yeah the, yesterday, that, like you say, the timing just absolutely broke me. And it was just like, we're seriously, we, we, we could be close to having the club saved and bang, you hit us with, with, with this. And it's just, why on the same day? You know what I mean? When it could have been done a couple of weeks ago. But it is what it is, I guess. And we move on. Yeah, there's a theory that you get all the uh, all the emotion out in 24 hours. True. You know, get take the good and the bad out the same day, get it out in the open, have a weekend to think about it, and then go because the players and the staff return on Monday, I believe. Yeah, they and, do. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's there's still you know let's not forget there's there's a structure still there that needs to be working pre-season. However many players there are, um, yeah. I, I'm personally. I'm personally um, sort of in two minds of which way the direction will go now and how they go forward. Personally, I look at the bigger picture that David coming in saves the fantastic staff that are at the yeah. club. You know, the administration staff, the marketing staff, you know, the uh, pro rata staff that work match days and, you know, the coaches and the dinner ladies and the, the kit team and just everyone there i'm i'm so pleased for them and yeah, i yeah. think that if wayne's uh leaving the club puts them all in a strong position financially as well then then that will be it now i think that that book's closed now simon i think we closed the book yeah uh, and you know they say fresh starts are a good start well this is literally a blank canvas now there Definitely, is there is yeah. no there is obviously you've still got the backroom staff that are still there at the moment taking on board the uh the running of, of pre-season on Monday or as of Monday, but in general, it's now a case of blank piece of paper come, you know, yeah. either today, whether David sat down today with that blank piece of paper or, or whether he goes from Monday. Yeah, I mean, I think I said it on, well, I don't think, I know I said it on, with, when I was talking to Colin Gibson and Rainer Derby last night, that this whole thing now feels like a sort of full stop to the Mel Morris era. It's gone, it's done now. You know, Rooney was his last big signing, his last PR stunt, if you like, after Lampard. It's it's over now. So yeah, it it, it that end, you know, that that era of Mel Morris is over and done with. Hopefully now we can start. We I, 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 it has to be Clouds now that gets the club. Surely he he owns the stadium. We've got to get that stadium back in the club. Yeah. But at the end of yeah. the day, at the minute. Obviously, until everything's gone through, we don't know if he's bought it with a company, if that company then is going to buy Derby County. Obviously, that then integrates the stadium back to the back to Derby County Football Club. Um, so it, it, it may have just gone about that, Simon. It made me laugh when people were questioning the name of the company that uh, I believe required the, the commodity of Prior Park Stadium. I think it was called it Totem Nuco. Totem, Totem Nuco, yeah. And people yeah. going, oh, Nuco, Nuco, it's it's the same Mel as Mel yeah, Morrison. I think you can sit down, relax, breathe. Yeah. New <laughs> company, Nuco. Um, yeah, I think I think you're right. I think I think in a way, in a strange way, I think David running the club, if he gets control of the club, it sort of takes a big decision of him because yeah. he's now going to be running the football club under a, a budget we all know about FFP mm. he's a businessman he's a stupid businessman and whatever the structure was of Wayne's contract and, and sponsorship etc that money goes back into a pot yeah and you know we can go on now talking about the future of, 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 of who's going to take the helm so, uh, well, yeah, I think I think a clean, it's quite exciting in, in a strange way. Yeah, yeah, it's quite exciting because it's one minute you're thinking about Mansfield Town away in the Papa John's Trophy, and the next minute you're thinking about new ownership 
new manager, new structure. Yeah, let's let's go for it. Yeah, we can't forget. I see the uh, the fixture list came out this week, didn't it? We've got yes. Oxford United at home. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's a good start to the season. Oxford United at home. Is Jamie Hansen still there? I don't know, but is um what's his face? Sam Winnell? Was he there? Is he there? Yeah, he was one of their. Was he? Was what? Well, he didn't play many games towards the end of last season, did he? But probably injured. Sure. He certainly. <laughs> yeah, he certainly started started off well. But yeah, the fixtures came out, and um, again, you look at that. You look at that league, Simon, and and we'll quickly look at look at it. It's there for the taking. Oh yeah, definitely, it is. Um, yeah, let, let's see if I can find the fixtures that so we can have a look through them. But because obviously, when we used to look at um, sort of the fixtures, <laughs> we'd always look at um, when we're playing Forest. We don't have to look at it this year, which is nice. I don't mind actually. So, I, what I had to do was look on who we're playing on my birthday. Yeah. That's 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 my new thing now is who's playing on or near my birthday. So, we've got could that Derby County versus Port Vale. Um, at Pride Park, so uh, there you go. Is, uh, is that Pride Park? Is it? That's a Pride Park. There's well, a, there's they'll, a... they'll they will bring three thousand. Well, yes, is it? It's, I think it's going to be a bit. I think it... Tun, Tunstall Massive, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's going to be a bit surreal. I think next season because obviously we look at um, the championship prides, and normally you, you generally get quite a few at Pride Park. Next year is going to be a bit funny. So obviously, I've got the fixtures up now. Um, Pre-season then, Bradford away, Hertha Berlin at Pride Park. That might be worth a watch. We like having a, have a we had a who was it last year? Rail Betis. Wolfsburg. To, no, it was Rail Betis last year. Rail Betis. Wolfsburg was the year before, wasn't it? I'm sure we played them. Yeah. We we, Wolfsburg at we, some can't remember. Did we play them in Austria? Or did we play them at Pride Park? I can never remember. We played Hoffenheim at Pride Park when Gary Rout took when Gary Rout took over. They I think we played us. Wolfsburg over in Austria or some yeah. We did German, did we did mini German tour. I'm sure we did that. Mm. Again, old, can I remember? Yeah, um, and obviously Stevenage away, and then obviously the uh, the Wayne Rooney uh, derby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the Wayne yeah. Rooney derby, derby Kai yeah. versus Leicester. Well, it would have been, never mind, but yeah, yeah, they're about to rename the Rooney Vardy trophy, haven't they? Yeah. So, I'm not, uh, about, yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to call it now. But yeah, there's some interesting fixtures in there. You know, you, you look through it and you I, I look at teams that have never seen us play, you know, you know, like your Shrewsbury's, your Fleetwoods, um, Cambridge, Port Bell. I, I, I have actually been to Vale Park when I was very young. I went with my dad. Um, I think Tommy Johnson scored. I think we won actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm actually when they when they came out, I'm I'm actually looking looking forward to it. Just there's, there's it's, just, it's, it's just new, isn't it? Yeah, you, you've 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 got to, you know, you've got to look at it in a positive. It, it it's a season of of the unknown. You can look at it, and I know that us Derby fans have had the rip taken out by our certain um, friends up the road because of their success in the Premier League. And congratulations, well done. You know, an astute uh, employment of a of a coach. At the right time, you got there. You know, their their minds quickly forget that they were in this position. Mr. Under was it Colin Coldwood? I think managed them in League One. Yeah. Um, but but I look at these fixtures, I'm thinking, wow, Cambridge. Well, last time I was there was '83, I think it was when mm. John, certain John McCaw scored two in the uh, in the FA Cup second round at the Abbey Stadium. And then look at Joey Barton and Bristol Rovers. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. I know people think I'm in my thirties, but I'm a bit older. I'm afraid. Uh, um, that, that is absolutely staggering that you can remember that far back, to be quite honest. Yeah. I can go back even further, but that's another, that's another time. <laughs> well, you've got Bristol Rovers, for instance, yeah. and Joey Barton. Mm. You know, what a, what, you know, another character. Yeah. You just you just know he's going to wind his um, his neck out and, and really test uh, us fans. And, 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 and again, they've had a history of, of sharing grounds and they've gone through the, the, the mire. They will be on a bounce this year. They've just got promotion with that incredibly strange result at the end of last season. Yeah. Um, and then did you say they've got uh, Exeter, who are yeah, another, Exeter. another promoted side? It's it's I think Forest Green. Forest Green. It's all these think... new grounds that we're going to get to travel to as well. I think you know what I mean. They'll love the the the, the, the clubs there. They'll love it because they know 
they'll get packed out they'll get a packed out away end yeah. they know their revenue will be massive when Absolutely. Derby County comes time because it doesn't matter what league when we know how loyal our supporters are and we'll fill out grounds Absolutely. I, I'm still positive we'll fill out grounds 100% I think um, the one I'm looking for is Morecambe Morecambe yeah They're, are they in our league or are they in league 2 they're in league 2 aren't they oh I'm a what was it I always was, get confused. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait. I've got uh, it. I, 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 that I, I, wasn't I, I, a very I, wise decision. I might have made See if you get that look, pun there, mate. I might, I, might, <laughs> I might have made myself look a bit of a prat there because if they're a League Two, what I was going to say was I've always wanted to taste their pies because apparently <laughs> they are the Football League Pie of the Year winner every year. And if they are a League Two, I do apologise. And I need, uh, this is what you get for waking me up early in the morning. Sorry, Sorry mate. Sorry, you're not had your coffee um, yet, I know. No. Well, at, least um, we get, well, at least we get a sort of derby. We get a Burton Albion, don't we? Burton, yeah, you do. Well, the interesting game, I think, is actually quite early on, which is Charlton away. Mm. Because I think you will know quite quickly with the squad that is put together, with the management, which we'll get back to put together, yeah. where we're at. Because obviously they are always been there or thereabouts. They challenged for a playoff spot last year to the last game. Mm. And I think they also did that the year before. So they're oh, going to be... Wait, expected. sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Yes, we, we have got Morecambe. Yeah. <laughs> I knew we had. So Morecambe <laughs> with pie of the year every year. Right. You know where you're so going Their then. pies are infamous. And I've always said to my beloved dad, if we ever go to Morecambe, I don't Bit care what we're doing. I don't care if it's on a cold December Tuesday night. We're yeah, going yeah. for a pie. <laughs> so, oh, but no, God. but the show. Yeah, I think we've got Sheffield Wednesday last game of the season, which will be interesting. Yeah, Sheffield Wednesday away. That's some trip, so Plymouth Argyle. Oh, oh, well, yeah, there's a rivalry. There's a big club. There's a fifteen thousand uh, uh, crowd every. Didn't we get promoted at Plymouth Argyle all them years ago? We did, 4-1. You see? It was, you at, see. Home. It was at home. Was they scored home? first. Yeah, they, they did. Yeah. John Gregory bagged this all. I'm sure. Callahan scored. Callahan, Gregory. Um, I can't remember. I think Bobby. I think Bobby might have. Got, Bobby, got yeah, I think it might have, yeah. But yeah, but we've got to remember as well, the other teams have got to play. Wickham Wanderers. That's going to be oh, fun, isn't it? Yeah. But then again, you know, Derby fans need to now wake up, you know, as we have this morning and go, Okay, let's get back to, to to what we're doing. And the interesting thing is, Simon, are we four weeks away from the first fixture? Give or take five yeah, weeks. Yeah, five weeks now. Exciting times. We you know, get Wimbledon out of the way, and we're, we're there or thereabouts for the first friendly. Get Wimbledon out of the way, uh, mate. I'm into cricket at a minute, so <laughs> I can't be bothered with tennis again. Another team is all Lincoln. I'm quite looking forward to going there. Beautiful it's, stadium. It's, Beautiful mm, stadium. Oh, and again. It's an hour up the road. There's a great hungry horse as you just come outside Newark. Oh, it's, on fantastic... it's on a Tuesday night as well. Yeah, but they do a fantastic rack of ribs. If you yeah, just come back to Newark Island, there's uh, the hungry horse. Yeah. There's a uh, there's a KFC. But yeah. they do a great rack of ribs. So I recommend that as well. Yeah, I drive past it every time. Well, every time I have to go skeggy with the in-laws, you see. <laughs> I was hoping it was a weekend. The least we've got an excuse then to, yeah, I'll come. <laughs> I, think that, I think there's no trip there that isn't actually interesting. No, think, exactly. You know, going back down to Ipswich, I love going to Ipswich. I think it's a. I remember handing Christmas cards outside there uh, when we were away. We we got beat and we got beat one nil. We scored an own goal, a bizarre own goal. Mm. Um, and I remember handing out Christmas cards, and the Derby fans were giving us us guys a right load of stick because these Christmas cards had got signatures in, and yeah. they were moaning. It was the first year, I think, whether. When FA Cup tickets weren't part of the um, season oh, right. ticket package, yeah, yeah. and I think they were all expected to have FA Cup tickets in there, and I think they were in shock when they got a signature of uh, Adam Ledgekins. <laughs> he was def- he was definitely one of them that signed, and then what have you. So, well, yeah, another Portman Road. It's it's one of those stadiums where you go outside and this traditional burgers being cooked on, you know, uh, and it's just a great it's just a great place. Like you could you can name so many grounds on there that we haven't been to, and mm. you know, yes, okay, we're in League One. Yes, it's not the Championship. Yes, it's it's a downward step. But think about the positives, guys and girls. Think about you know, there's so many. I was saying to uh, a chap who I referee basketball with, and we were saying that 
there's actually quite a lot of trips there. You have to stay over yeah, yeah. the weekend. Like Cambridge is a beautiful city. Mm. Beautiful city. Um, yeah, it is. Same as like March. Could have gone for the Gold Cup as well, you see. Yeah, Cheltenham. Yeah, classic. But it is a nice place. Mm. Um, so, you know, this I wouldn't stay over in Port Vale. But, uh, but yeah, you might meet Robbie Williams. You never know. You never know. Bristol, Bristol's a good away, a good away uh, night out. Yeah, Exeter, Exeter's a really nice city. So yeah. you're not far from Torquay. So yeah, yeah. you can have a holiday. You can have a holiday down Plymouth. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, you mentioned Portman Road there, Ipswich. Do you know the last time, first and last time I ever went there, I went on the. Um, they used to take the buses, didn't they? Um, you used to get a bus down there for obviously the support road well. riders. That's the one. Couldn't think of the name then. Um, literally got off the bus and studied dog shit. Part <laughs> side the ground. I'm there with my mum and my dad. Watch that <laughs> oh, straight in the dog shit. I thought, well, my dad just went shit. All this is. <laughs> it's it's. <laughs> we it's, it's, well. a, it's a very traditional ground. Like, if I remember rightly, this seats are below the level of the pitch. Similar to Luton, isn't it? We actually sit below the 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 the, the pitch level. So, well, yeah, it's the question is who leads us there? Exactly, and that is what was my leads us on nicely because do we? It, it's a tough one now because let's think about it. Liam Senior, you would think, would be interim at the minute. Now, obviously, he turned down the Blackpool job. He did. Did was he aware that Rooney was going to leave? Did he think? Might have, they may just give me the job here because otherwise it's going to be potentially looking at costing to get a new manager in along with his staff etc or so do we stick with Liam do we look elsewhere do we go for another young manager uh, someone mentioned Jody Morris to me last night not a bad shout obviously um, John Terry another one um, and both, I think both very highly qualified coaches Exactly. Quite an ambi- quite an ambitious one with Sean Dyche. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Dyche he does a very always does a funny press conference. He'd be very entertaining. Yeah, I just think I don't think we'd be able to afford him. And then uh, the obvious choice was that I think the most popular one was Neil Warnock. <laughs> which uh, love him or hate him. I love Neil. I love yeah, Neil. Yeah. I've 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 had the pleasure obviously being on the Mike Pitch side when he's He's been in the dugout, and there's him and Mick McCarthy and Ian Holloway are the three that always stand out as the most entertaining 90 minutes. You, you forget there's a football match on yeah, yeah. because you're constantly watching them and their antics. Like Mick, <laughs> Mick McCarthy as well is one that's been mentioned. He's yeah, just yeah. hilarious. He, he's absolutely, both, all three of them are absolutely hilarious. And, you know, it's are they, are they long in the tooth now? Like I know Neil, what is he, 73 now? Yeah, I think, well, obviously you said he's retired, didn't he? But I think if you've got someone like that, it would literally just be for a season just to sort of get some players in, get some yeah. structure in, yeah, um, get them, you know, just, just just sort of start a rebuild. And then you'd look, I mean, you'd look to them, obviously, you'd need someone that would quite happily take the reins. Ian Everett, for me, he did it at Bolton. Good coach. Would cost, though, I suppose. Because I think he's applied. John Eustace, I would consider, even, but obviously, I think I think Watford are looking at him, though, to be honest. But I know. Um, well, War, Warburton left. He's gone to West Ham, I yeah. believe. The QPR job, has that been replaced yet? I'm not is sure. Because Eustace is the assistant now, isn't he? No, he's, he's with Ireland now, isn't he? Has he gone to Ireland? Has yeah, he joined okay. in March, okay. only, a few, only a few months ago. But obviously, it's whether he wants to continue there or whether he wants to manage. I don't know. How, I don't know how the compensation shit stuff works with the international managers well, and whatnot. But compensation is interesting with the current staff you've got now. I don't know what mm. what the guys and girls are on regarding contracts and what have you. And if there's a if there's a compensation to pay on on anyone leaving or or whatever. I think I I tweeted yesterday, and this is your question, Simon. Do you go for a coach or a manager? Yeah. Two different, two different structures altogether. Mm. There is no coaches or managers, and there's very few managers or coaches. Yeah. You look at the greats of management, and you look at the great coaches. And I, I think I did a list, and you may have seen it on Twitter. <clears throat> so, for instance, um, 
I, I said something like um, Carsley yeah, yeah. versus Dyche. Yeah. Carsley is a UEFA A licensed coach, great coach. Yeah. Dyche is a is a, a former player turned manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played at the lower league with Northampton. Yeah. yeah. He played in I think he played in every single division, I'm pretty sure. Um that, so you look at so that that's your question. Do you do Warnock over um Everett? Yeah. And there's so there's so many different scenarios. What where would you go? Billy Davis. <laughs> Billy Davis. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> I just do you know with all the sort of um, British business. Yeah, well it's all obviously all the local businessmen and stuff, isn't it? <laughs> You might as well bring Billy back, you know. I'll tell you what, it'd be entertaining. It would be. It would be extremely entertaining. But it just, it just no, I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, know. I don't think you'd get, I don't think you'd get Peter Gasby on board if, if Billy came back. Oh, yeah, exactly. Imagine the uproar from that. But yeah, it's, yeah. It, well, this is it. And again, this is a decision for Klaus and, or if it is Klaus, um, to make that who's his, gonna, who's his manager? Me, personally, I, I, I think we would, I think personally, I'd go for, an experienced head, someone like a Warnock, a Mick McCarthy, just to sort of settle us down, give us a season, just to sort of put a structure in place, get some players in, because that's what you're going to need. Um, and then so look at... You'd go for a manager rather than a coach? I'd go for a manager, yeah, because a coach, we, you need players to coach. That's what a coach does, he coaches players. At the moment, we haven't got any players. We need, we need a manager that's going to manage... Every, it's going to be a big job and I think that manager will need a director of football I think that director of football will need a head of recruitment you know and I think that's the way we need to go so it's it, it it's a massive ask for just for a head coach to come in you know imagine now let's for instance say you had McLaren of 13-14 right obviously he came in did a great job um, imagine him coming in now he would not be able to do that same job now would he let's be honest and that, and that's another thing I've heard as well. Well, not heard, well, I've seen a lot of people going, let's get Nigel Clough back. He'll know what to do with no budget. He's done it before. The weird thing is, yes, he has. But when Appleby was mentioned as um, preferred, well, supposedly in the, in the running to, or winning the race, I suppose, when it was him that was announced by the BBC earlier this week, um, everyone went, oh, God, we can't be having another 10 years of... Of, of poor football and, and mid-table finishes and Nigel Clough and I'm thinking yeah a load of people now Rooney's going to go let's get Nigel Clough in doesn't make sense no I think I think one thing that's interesting and I'll come to my opinion of coach or manager you've lost a, a big marketing asset in Wayne Rooney he's a he is a marketing dream and yeah, I think that I think that David has got to look at the structure of what he puts in place now, um, I think he needs to market the club as a as a uh, all, all, foremost uh, um, as a localized club, a community club, the black and white pride, and you know bring. We, we, in the previous podcast, we both discussed about how you bring the marketing structure back uh, and positive uh, into the club. Not that it's not positive now, but even in, even better now. I think the management decision. Is part of that. Yeah. Um, I think you have to have someone who, yeah, has got um, an understanding. I think, I think, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. We, we had a discussion about the most important positions to recruit, and you've just hit, hit them both. Yeah. Director of football and head of recruitment, to me, are, f- are the most important because if you get that wrong, your manager is up against it straight away. Yeah. But if you get that right, the, the, the manager's job then becomes a coach and this it goes back to the argument coach yeah, or yeah. manager i don't think uses is ready no um i think i think lee cars his name was mentioned i think he's doing a great job at england paul I simpson think, as well another one of those simpson well he's just signed a contract to carlisle hasn't he extension and again oh. simo simo's had past experience as an assistant here and yeah. got if you remember he left with with steve Eric and, yeah, and Eric. Steve, so yeah, i yeah. think going back there is, is not particularly a marketing strategy I would go for. Neil Warnock, 73, has he got it? Oh, I'd, I'd love to see Neil. He, he loves Derby. Everyone he knows he loves Derby. He, he's always been 
rather cheesed off. He never got the opportunity. Mm. Um, Daesh, I think, is a, is an opportunity. Would you go down the lines of Nathan Jones, who who's not necessarily a, a, a highly qualified coach, but what a motivator! He'll not, yeah, um, he'll, he'll not leave Luton there, will he? No, because he won't. <laughs> well, then, then again, you look at you look at mistakes that have been made in the past. I look at the uh, is it the Cowley brothers who did they they're at Portsmouth now, aren't they? But yes. didn't they didn't did they, they split up? Didn't they? They went to Huddersfield, if I remember. Yes, that they? was it. Huddersfield, and yes. It, and they went from like a lower league up to the championship and got absolutely found yeah. out. Mm. Um, did they go? Did they go to Lincoln as well and failed? And then now, no, what? that's that's where they're at. Lincoln. They they got their success at Lincoln. Yes. And then went. That's to, right. Uh, Non-league. Yeah. 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 Then went. Then went to Huddersfield. Well, they got Lincoln promoted, didn't they? Twice. Yeah. Then went to Huddersfield, and then it just went. Okay, you guys ain't got a clue about the championship. Uh, I, uh, you, you look at the current situation, would you give it Liam with Curtis? I, I tweeted that as a, as a potential. Love them both. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on a podcast. They're genuinely fantastic guys. Yeah. Uh, Curtis um, is just an absolute well, dream listen, of a, a Listening to him recently on Sky Sports, Talk Sport, he seems desperate to stay and play here. Yeah. You know, and... Yeah, maybe one day he will manage this club. Yeah. I didn't think his career was going to go that way when he used to talk. It used to sound like he wanted to go into punditry. Maybe he's changed his mind. But we used to see, we saw it on the on the YouTube videos that Derby do. He was in there with the coach room with Jagielka and, and Rooney and, and Liam, you know, discussing tactics, etc. things like that. You know, I think he, you know, this is, this is now, he said it himself, this is his club. This is the longest club he's served. Yeah, you know, and, it is, it is. And again, he will have no doubt ambitions. I'm pretty sure he's taking his badges at the moment. Yeah, I'm sure he's up to A for B. I may be wrong, but I'm I'm, I'm sure uh, a good friend of mine and the coaching staff told me that he's a he's got an unbelievable knowledge of of structure of, of defending and, and yeah, yeah. keeping shape. Um, I don't think they'll go for a, for a manager or a coach already in a position. No, because that costs money, and you just I think in a business plan. Structure. I don't think the EFL would 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 look at that kindly. Yeah. Straight away, you're paying out compensation course, for somebody, yeah. and they go turn around and go, really? So I think you're looking at people who are either prepared to leave a role um, at a risk of not being employed. Ian Ebert, I think he needs to stay at Bolton. I think his time again. Do you go back to that Derby connection? Yeah. Am I a fan of that? <laughs> It's had success, successes in the past, but it's also had its failures. But this, the, um, but this is the thing, though, isn't it? You know, we've had that many managers over the last few years that some have worked, some haven't worked, some look like they're working, but they didn't work. This person that comes in hasn't got to deal with Mel Morris anymore. True. See, I remember, I remember speaking to Craig Bryson. Um, and he, do you know, he said the best coach he, he, he had was go on, Nigel Pearson. Really? Mm. He was very, he was very fond of him. Again, you know, we don't quite know what happened with Nigel Pearson, but well, he ruffled feathers and he yeah. ruffled obviously someone's feathers so much that it became a a, a, a battle of the egos. Exactly. And ultimately, it, that's happened. The trigger was pulled again, wasn't it? Exactly, but let's be honest. You don't get you don't get promotion like as Nigel Pearson did without being able to have free reign of what you're doing. You know, let let's remember when Nigel Pearson was in control was in charge. Bearing in mind the season before, we we bought in player after player after player after player after player for Paul Clement. Nigel Pearson had two signings on or three signings on deadline day, and that was Anya didn't work out. Vidra did work out and was it Chris Wheel? Wheel Chris Wheel. Oh the keeper Chris oh, yeah. Wheeler. That's the yeah what he's was the, the guy that scored the own goal didn't he in goal they caught, wasn't it? Something like that. yeah yeah and you're thinking you can tell why there was a bit of a clash and why players weren't playing because it was just but yeah that's 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 what Craig Bryson told me anyway there was that Nigel Pearson was his so again you get a manager coming in here now they're not having to deal with Mel Morris you know they're not having to deal with with that that sort of chairman. I can't imagine. You know, like you said, David Clowes, if it is him who gets the club, isn't a stupid businessman. 
you'd you'd assume he wouldn't run the club himself, but he'd, he'd appoint a, a CEO, you know, someone that the manager's got someone to go to, etc. That sort of thing. Um, the 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 worry the, the worrying aspect I have of 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 this this employment is that there's been no scouting done of League One because I hasn't been able to. Yeah. This there's 700 players that are out of contract as of July the first. Yeah. Um, no one has been to watch, and no one quite rightly needed to go and watch a League One club in February, like Morecambe, like Fleetwood, to see the state of the pitch. We all have a good idea, even in the modern world, certain pitches are going to be um, the race course at best. <laughs> um, so that comes back again, back down to your your management structure. Do you yeah. go for a young manager with a with a wise head behind them? Yeah. Um, I always remember Jim Jim Smith. He went. He's been an assistant to a couple of people, hasn't he? As a wise head. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you look at other people who uh, have gone that way to support them. Um, it's 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 a it's a decision that David has got to to get right. Yeah, yeah. He's got to get right, and I think you, you've got to look at it as a businessman as well, because if he decides that it's a clean slate all the way through the football club, and he feels that. Um, fresh impetus needs to come in. Is there an element of, of cost against that? Like I said, contracts. I think the current coach we have now are fantastic. Yeah. I really yeah. Do. And I'm not just saying that again because I, I've worked side by side with them on, on, on the microphone and, and on the events team. They are very, very good coaches. Mm. It's, it, it's, again, in a strange way, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I, if, I, it's, it's, it's been... The, the, it, yesterday was the strangest day ever, but here we are talking Saturday in the morning. We're finding a lot of positives. Yes, regardless of the fact that Wayne Rooney's left, it is what it is. He's gone. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he's gone. You know, it, regardless of that fact that he, he's left now, there is still sort of ways we can spin this and go. It's free. It's a clean slate, a fresh start. You know, we, we just hope we can get this one over the line, whether it be Clouds, whether it be whoever. You would assume Clouds would be in pole position now. Um, we can I'll get it what, done. And... I'll tell you one thing I'd really like to see, Simon. I know we're, we're, we're not on air for much longer. I'd like to see the women's uh, team come closer. Yeah. I think it's a perfect opportunity for David to open up Pride Park, to open up uh, More Farm to the women's uh side of the football club as you know I, I was involved there for a brief while coaching the fantastic um under 13s when i was there now under 15s wonderful set of girls what the structure is amazing yeah and so it'd be great to see this opportunity for david to bring the women's structure under the same umbrella they're not asking for a lot of money they currently play at, at michael which is a great facility in, and uh they get a good crowd but wouldn't it be great to see them and their academy structure also based at Moor Farm. Again, yeah, there's, yeah, there's plenty of pitches at Moor Farm. You know, in there, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, you, you see the ones when you drive past it. You see them ones, but what you don't see is the ones that have hidden at the back. Yeah, that, that we know are there. <laughs> it's a great <laughs> opportunity. Again, it's a it's a it's a clean piece of paper. So if anyone's listening from from Derby County and they want ideas, come and listen to this podcast. We'll always get ideas. Bring the women's game within the boundaries of, of uh, within the family. They, at the moment, they always feel like a a, a distant second cousin yeah, yeah, who yeah. wear the badge. But you know, I, I would love to see them all under one roof. I think David, if if you can bring that under the same umbrella, I, I think there would be a wonderful marketing strategy. They were so close to getting promotion themselves mm. to 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 the championship, and um, yeah, I, I just think again. It's an exciting opportunity for, yeah. a, for that blank piece of paper. And no doubt we'll, we'll catch up over the next uh, three or four weeks and we'll be texting each other and tweeting each other. And hey, you know what? I'm so glad that you're positive, Simon, because I'm a positive guy, as you know. And I think we just need to get behind whoever takes over officially in all capacities. I just, I just think, like you said, the head of recruitment, director of football, need to be in place before a manager's chose. Yeah. I think you can get those in place, let them decide who the manager is, let let David run the business, let them run the football club, and, you know, 
get the board in place. That, that's the other thing. Get a positive board in place. So yeah, yeah. exciting, exciting. Yeah, exactly. It is. So yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up at that. Pre-season starts next week. Um, I, I'm, are you taking me there? Are you going to coach me? Am, am I am I set to be number one? Ah, this yeah. Year? <laughs> you, you want you want. To, I've heard a rumor that you you you're looking to have the uh, second on the bench role, the keeper, the backup keeper. Yeah, that would do I, me I'm, just fine. I'd be I, your TikToks are very impressive, mate, and I'm glad you took on board my <laughs> coaching advice. Your uh, your angles are better. Your approach to a ball coming into the box is a lot better. You're looking fitter. You feel fitter? Feel fitter, yeah, I do feel fitter. There you go, mate. And they're all free of charge. Never charge you a bean. I know. You see, you're nice like that. That's why. <laughs> you're, just, you're just that guy. That's what you are. <laughs> Bless you. Thanks, mate. But yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, it, weirdly enough, I thought this morning we was going to be having a bit of a bit of a bitch in a moment, but we've, we've not, we've turned it into a positive. So hopefully people listening to this can see the positives of of thing. And I think the, the way, what we can take from this is a clean slate, you know, blank piece of paper. Whoever takes over the club, it looks like it could be uh, David Klaus. If it is, the, the world is oyster and, you know, the, the club is, the, the, the supporters are always going to be behind the club and I like the suggestion of the women's the women's team. I think that's great. You know, we say we're a community club. Let's, yeah. let's show that we are. Absolutely. And bring, you know, 100%. why not bring the women's to, into it? You 100%. Know? Let's, let, we, can't, we can't sugarcoat it. Women's football is getting more popular. Yeah, there is still some dinosaurs out there. I believe it isn't, but it actually it is. So you know, great. Honestly, I highly recommend it for people listening to this podcast. The women's academy structure is there's some of the talent that's out there. They deserve to be played their football on the more form pitches. And I tell you what, if they did play on the more form pitches, they would get a hundred plus on each pitch watching them. And what an experience! It's it's a perfect opportunity to market the football club under one umbrella. Yeah, definitely. We've seen them do it with the under 18s. We, we, you know, we've seen them bring fans into to their games at more form. So yeah, why not do the women's? But yeah, let, we'll end it there. We, we've had a good chat for an hour. Um, but yeah, I'll, do, I'll, I'll end it as well. That just to sort of let my regular listeners know and Lewis is know this is Chris is not not a guest anymore. Chris is now my co-host. So we'll, we we will be running this podcast together. Um, I'm quite happy to say we've had it. We've had we've been chatting about it for ages and. It's nice to have someone to talk to rather than sometimes me just talking to myself or trying to fish for guests. So <laughs> nothing wrong with listening to you, Simon. Oh, brilliant. So yeah, so yeah. So um, Chris, it's I'm looking forward to to seeing where the where the podcast goes and what we can do with it. Absolutely. As long as we can slip a bit of basketball in there as well. I'll be, I'm looking forward to my contribution. Oh, I'm Darby Kai podcast. I'm, really... <laughs> I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll tell you a story on another podcast about the time. We were so close getting Derby County and the basketball and the cricket all under one roof. That's another story. Oh, teaser. Teaser. Look at that. There's a teaser. There yeah. Go. Brilliant. Awesome. So, yeah, thanks thanks for, for coming up this morning, Chris. Um, I know it's early. I'm going to go wear my kids up. I've got some gardening to do today. I'm going to go back to bed, mate. <laughs> all right, Paul. Last one. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, come on, Derby.